<laughs> Who would have ever thought I would be a mini truck owner? <laughs> All right. So I've. Wow, well, this thing is dirty. So I'm back from the port of Baltimore drove all the way through Virginia and now I am home so experiencing this Daihatsu mini truck since yesterday I've come to uncover all the things that are wrong with it all right let's take a look first after receiving the car I noticed that the gas tank was on E which is necessary whenever you're shipping it through the port they usually require that the cars usually be empty of gas so I immediately went to the gas station in Baltimore and I unlocked my gas cap right there and I was able to fill only 5.76 gallons so immediately once I filled it to it pretty much went to the halfway mark and it took a while after driving for it to eventually get up to full well that 5.76 gallons only got me to around 196 kilometers and 196 kilometers is only 121 miles so I noticed that that did not get me far at all so I barely made it home when I made it home I essentially had to put gas in again but this time around I was able to fill it to 6.79 gallons so I need to go ahead and see how far that will get me but at this time I'm unsure how many gallons this particular hijet has I've read in different forums that this tank is around nine gallons so hopefully after driving it for a while maybe it clears up and maybe I'll get around nine gallons because I don't want to fill gas every other day another issue I noticed is that essentially at red lights I noticed that the steering wheel will start to wobble a little bit it'll go and then the only way I could stop it is just by holding on to the steering wheel and that will keep it from shuttering it's not that big of an issue but it's something that I notice I have seen on some Suzuki carry forums that maybe there's some type of washer down here that needs to possibly go up and that way it'll probably keep it from stuttering but I don't know it's not that big of a deal it's a truck I'm used to trucks shuttering and making noise at red lights so it's not anything that I'm actively looking to fix now that I clean off this dusty crusty steering wheel from Japan let's see if this 15 inch universal black panther steering wheel cover will fit let's see I got this from Amazon guys so just know that everything that I show or its variants links will be in the description below for purchase if you want to get it as well so this is 15 inches these are usually the hardest things to do is put on a steering wheel cover let's see if I can do it stretch this up At the bottom I haven't done this since my Honda Civic 1990 And success! Alright, wanted to clean off that steering wheel before I put on a steering wheel cover. It's a little, it's a little wrinkly, but that's just how it was packaged. So maybe after driving it, it'll form a little bit better. But it's cool, 15 inches. Alright, on to some positive aspects. One thing that I noticed is that they changed the oil recently. Um, Rewa 929. Um, probably was what September of last year I'm not sure before it was shipped off to me so we have a fine 10w30 oil in oil filter so the oil filter was also changed so the current kilometers is 156,772 um, it was changed at 156,006 so the next change is necessary at 161,006 kilometers so right now we're around the 90,000 
mile range. The difference between this is only 5,000 kilometers, which is around 3,100 miles. So thank you for keeping up on the oil because I definitely didn't know if it was changed, but it has been changed recently because I didn't put that many kilometers on it just driving home. Another thing is the air conditioner was also recharged recently, so I shouldn't have any problems with that. I did turn it on yesterday and it did blow cold, so I didn't have a problem with that. So thank you for keeping up on that. All right, so those are two positives for the last person keeping up with this vehicle. All right, so I do see the little surface rust, but I don't really care about that. I will scrub it all down and repaint it with a bed liner paint, so no issues there. One issue here is I do see that there is a missing cover for the hole within the bed of the truck. So all holes have been covered all around, except right here. I see they put a rock right there, so I'm not sure how we'll replace that. So I guess I'll just put some tape on it so water doesn't just seep down into the catalytic converter down there. But other than that, all the bolts are on. No problem, everything seems to be fine down there. Once again, a little surface rust. This was an R rating, but it doesn't really matter to me because I know I'll just repaint it um, and then move from there. I do see that it's been repainted at least once, um, just with some touch-up paint here and there. Um, since 1995 but I'm fine with that. So one of the things that's necessary within this northeastern state is that cars here require a yearly inspection if you want to drive it on the road. So I went to the body shop here and tried to get an inspection and they essentially told me you would fail if we went ahead and did it. So if you can see here the tires are dry rotted. At first I knew I needed new tires based off of the photos when this was in Japan, but then when I received it at the port, I saw these tires and I was like, wow, the tires are fine. You know, these are some snow tires. These are what, Blizzax from Bridgetone. And I was like, oh man, I don't need new tires. But, but the good thing is I purchased four new tires last week in advance. So the auto body repair shop did mention that I would fail because of this. as you can see, they're definitely rotted. And if you look at the date code right down here, you can see that this was made on the 38th week of 2003. Right now we are in 2022. Wow, these are 19 year old tires in the front. Let's go to the back. You can see from the date code, let's see, right here, this was the 49th week of 2005. Look at that. Wow, 17 year old tires. These tires have been on for so long. They still have some thread on it, but it's not safe to drive on the road. They are dry rotted and they're old as dirt. So I definitely have to get the new tires on. And he definitely stated that I would fail because of the brakes. If you can see down in there, I pretty much have no brake pads left. So I went ahead and purchased some brake pads and a new rotor online from a mini truck dealer on eBay. And he had the entire set for about $301 for both rotors and both sets of front brake pads. I'm not gonna mess with the brake shoes in the back. The auto shop didn't mention anything about the brake shoes, so I'm fine with that. So I don't think I need new rotors, but you never know. So I went ahead and purchased both, and I'll be doing it myself. It's super easy. You'll just be taking off this cotter pin. So I think you'll get like a 32 millimeter cap, which I have because I've worked on it with my Sentry when I changed out um, some of the studs. And then I'll take this off, and then I'll essentially be able to take off the um, rotor from there. So I'll be doing the brakes and the rotors myself and then I'll bring it to them for the four tire change and hopefully they can pass me. But one of the things the guy at the auto shop mentioned is that I have some type of fluid leak. Let's take a look. So if you look down here, I'm leaking really badly. When he swiped his hand under there, he said it may be some type of transmission fluid, but I'm not sure if it's transmission fluid because I didn't have any issues shifting and I don't see that the transmission is leaking. Well, maybe it is a little bit down here, but it doesn't seem like this particular section is causing it to get super wet over here. Um, I did notice that after driving from the port um, that the steering was fine at first and then it got really stiff. So I'm thinking that my power steering may have gone out. I couldn't find any replacements online. So what I'll do is try to locate the power steering and see if I can put some power steering fluid with stop leak in there. I'm not sure if that will help, but that's pretty much all I could do at this time because I don't see any power steering replacements for this particular car. So I don't know, maybe the transmission is leaking as well. I have no idea, but I'll let the auto body guy deal with that once um, I go for my inspection. But other than that, everything seems to be spot on. That's really the only mechanical issues that I'm having.
One last issue that I noticed is that the license plate holder holes have been completely seized up. So there seems to have been nuts in there. But when I try to put my own license plate in there, I was unable to because as you can see, there's metal in there. So what I'm gonna have to do is grind and drill the old metal out. And then I'll see if I can replace it with some new bolts for my new license plate once I get it in. All right, so that's an issue right there. I guess it's super old. Once again, this is a 1995. We're looking at around 27 years old and I'm unable to put the license plate in there. So I'm stuck with putting it in the back of the window right there. So, oh, but other than that, that's really the only issues I found. The AC works fine, the radio works fine, even though it's Japanese. It pretty much gets to 90 on the dial, which gives me at least three or four radio stations in this area, so that works perfectly fine. Everything down here works. I don't have any issues other than holes here on the seats, which I'm fine with because I already have replacement seat covers for this car, and we see that the headliner is coming down. I'm not apt to fix it at this time. I do have the glue. Um, but it could stay like this. I'm not truly worried about that right now. Um, and this is a little loose. I'm not sure if there was supposed to be something there to keep it sturdy. I see they have some tape right here. I guess that's what they put here to keep it from flopping around. But I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. But it's whatever. I'm not truly worried about that. But I enjoy this truck. The four-wheel drive works perfectly fine. Once you press it, it engages all four wheels. And it's a fun toy to drive. I'm definitely happy to get it. I definitely want to save some gas on my trip to work um, so far with the 5.6 gallons it seems like I'm getting around 21 miles per gallon after measuring the distance that I went so other than that it's a nice little mini truck all right so this seems to be bent let's go ahead and bend this back all right so seems like that's as straight as it'll probably be all right I could probably replace that with a shark fin if I felt like it but it's okay it works all right all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this off and get to driving again 